Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco, the creator of Approval Tests. In this episode, we're actually not going to talk about Approval Tests. We're going to continue on the last episode about talking about techniques for testing hard-to-test code. While not directly related to Approval Tests, the more you start testing, the more you're going to need techniques like this to get into code, and it's something that we use in Approval Tests quite a lot. If you haven't already seen the previous episode, I suggest you click the link below right now. We're going to build on the previous example and it will help to give you an idea of where we are. Let's get into the code. So I'm going to continue where we left off before with the alarm clock. And now I'm going to sketch up a scenario where we can turn the alarm clock on. Let's do it in English first. So the first thing is we're going to create the alarm clock. We're going to set the alarm to 726. And then we're going to turn it on. When everything's set and done, should be ringing, and of course, it should be 726. Now that we have the English, it should be easy to turn it into code. Step one, let's create the alarm clock. Step two, set the alarm, 726. Step three, turn it on. I'm going to need a new method for this. Step four, I'm going to use a simple assert to test the primitive is true. A dot is ringing. And then finally, I'm going to need two asserts to figure out what time it is. Date time now dot hour and 26 for the minute. Well, there's our test. Let me clean up that English now that it's served its purpose. Is ringing is easy enough to do. It's just going to be a property, and I'm going to use the auto property. Turn on is a fairly simple method to do, too. Mainly, I'm going to say wait until or wait while it is not ready to ring. After it's ready to ring, is ringing is going to be equal to true. Well, I believe I could run this test and that it would pass, but seeing as it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I have quite a long wait before this test would complete. So the question is, how am I going to actually make this test usable? I would suggest you pause the video for a second and think about the question yourself. How would you test it? Would you just ignore this? Would you use some other technique? Now that you've had some time to think about it, I'm going to show you a technique that I will use to test it. Now, in practice, I would actually use it using both of these techniques, and I'm going to talk about that in the next episode. But right now, I just want to focus on the single technique of mocking. So notice the problem in this code exists in the middle of the code. Is ready to ring is a hard function because it's dependent on date. As you can see, the slice is made for the place where the trouble piece of code exists in the middle of your method. And the first thing is to realize that this method is actually not the problem. It's calling out to something which is the problem. And so the technique is to slice out that call, and instead of calling to it, call to a fake, and that fake is going to return fake data. And this is the entire concept around mocking. Let's go to the code and see how that looks in practice. So first, the thing I need to fake is is ready to ring, which is not currently fakeable. To do that, I need to make it virtual. This allows for the polymorphism. Now that it's virtual, I can go back here, make my alarm clock instead of my alarm clock, or better yet, a mock alarm clock. I'm going to create this class, and I'm going to make it extend an actual alarm clock. And now I'm going to override the isReadyToRing function. So rather than having it go to time, I'm just going to say, when you finally get to 5, ring. So, I need some sort of count, 
and then that is equal to 5, I want to ring. Of course, I'm going to have to create this variable. And I'm going to create this as a public variable so I can access it. Now, if I run this, it should complete, but it's not going to pass. And it's not going to pass because we are verifying the time, which is not going to be 726. So instead of verifying the time, instead I'm going to say, hey, this should have called is ready five times. And therefore, the count should be equal to five. If I run that, we can see that it completes, and it completes in a very short amount of time. So this is called mocking, or slicing, or faking, or stubbing, or test doubles. There's a whole bunch of mocking frameworks out there that will help you to create these little classes for yourself. But I'm not going to go into those. And I'm not going to go into it because in the next series, I'm going to show you how you don't need to use this at all if you combine the two techniques that we just talked about, the slice and the peel. Before I close, I'd like to highlight Jason Kearney again. I've already mentioned him in a couple episodes, and he's done a lot for approval tests. But he also came up with a technique of using mocks to slice into legacy code as a discovery mechanism for how it works. It's an extremely powerful technique. And once I met him and learned of this technique, it completely transformed the way I use legacy code. As always, if you have any questions, tweet it with the hash approval test. I monitor that and will answer you promptly.